everyone, Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing at SEMA 2022 with a very unique <laughs> and well-respected member of the detailing industry, Chris West. How's it going? Hey, never had it so good. Thank you for having me. This is very cool. Solution finish. It's been around for what, 11 years? Uh, 2010 is when I invented it and it went in a bottle 2011, the first bottle, you know, so it's... It's been a while, a while, you know, but it's not like some of these guys, 30 years, 70 years, Rufus, you know, so pretty new, you know, we got to start somewhere. It, it, solu it's not new, man. Solution finish really works. And I'm struck by, there's lots of fancy brands out here with great marketing. SEMA is the latest and greatest. Yeah. But like solution finish, it, it looks like it did a while, but like it's still around for a reason. Like. Tell me about your baby, man. Like, tell yeah. me about Solution Finish. What does it do, and why is it still relevant after you invented well, it 11 years ago? Um, people always ask me how I came about inventing it. Uh, I own, I, I was in construction development. I built multi-million dollar custom homes. Ball players, celebrities, rich doctors and attorneys all lived in my houses in Southern California. But in part of that development company, I owned and operated coin operator car washes. So in that time, everybody always asked me what they should do with their plastic. You know, and they were using armor all and turtle wax and that was big time way back when. So fast forward 15 years, 2010, real estate took a dump again in, in California, bubble pop, nothing was selling. So I just spent six months in my garage with an idea I had 15 years ago, you know, because everybody was asking me, what, the, what can they do with their plastic? And I was giving them the old hacks, peanut butter oil, linseed oil with copying machine, silicone, uh, transmission fluid, you know, that kind of thing, just to make it black. Like Meguiar's, they started as a furniture polish. And then guys, when the cars started coming out, they would take their wa furniture wax and put it on the, the crappy paint of the um, Model T's and stuff. And that's how they got into it. So I got into it with the idea that um, anything that you put on only lasts three days, seven days. You know, if, if, if even now, the silicone-based dressing, if it lasts 14 days, that's a, that's a record, you know. So, I just came up with a f process that um, it does three important things. It dissolves the existing oxidation solvent base. It puts the colorant back into the part being treated, which is the, uh, the modified carbon. Because everything on a vehicle that's black is black because of a PBK carbon. It, rubber, vinyl, plastic, hoses, caps, it's all... It, the color in it is black, is uh, the carbon. So what I had to do is figure out a way to put the carbon back into the part being treated. So the only way that could be accomplished is the carbon had to be milled half the size of a virus to be able to absorb into the microscopic part, pores of the uh, plastic. And that w took a long time, you know. I'm, I'm not a chemist, so I just had this idea and I'm getting these chemicals from a crazy um, chemist in, in uh, Arizona. In fact, I probably ended up with twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of chemicals that didn't work. You know, this didn't work, this didn't work. And he, I ordered some surfactants and um, uh, Benzawad and he said, uh, you know, Chris, none of this shit goes together. You know that, right? <laughs> and I go, no, nah, just leave me alone. Let me and let me do it, you know. And then finally I had the eureka moment where I wiped it on a plastic Saturn bumper and I buffed it off and it was dry to the touch, it solid, I couldn't wash it off. So that was the birth of Solution Finish. And then through the years, it's become, I'm on like the third generation of Solution Finish. Okay, so this this is not the same product you invent. Like you continue to update it. Yeah, because competition. You know, you don't want to just go. Oh, I got the best product. Nobody can touch me. Well, these big wax wall guys that got a lot more money than I do, they can try to figure shit out. 
Yeah. And I just stay one step ahead, you know. You're Hopefully. So, you're obviously a unique human, and I think a lot of people who try to start a company envision that they can do it all. Not many people could do what you did, man. They need the, the chemists, the blenders, whatever it is that people do. Yeah. Like, when you look back at it, can you believe that this happened? No, because I was a big shot developer, you know, and I went from making a serious living, trust me when I tell you that, to no income. No what income. What happened? I just quit. 40 years, I was done. I, I well, You don't just quit. Like, why? That must have been a big deal. You know, trust me, all my buddies are going, wait a minute. You, you're you going to quit and you have some inky black stuff that goes on plastic or something? What? You know, they were losing their minds. But I was done. I was out of the corporate world. I wanted something that I could just sink my teeth into with nobody bothering me. Because when you're in development and you own your own company, it's not, you're not the boss. You have investors and banks and the insurance companies and the state and you have um, the city councils and you have uh, engineers, architects, subs, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. You're being pulled in a million different directions. Then you have the economy, then you have insurance, then you have trying to get construction loans and take out, you know. So I was just done, 40 years was enough, you know. And, you know, when you burn the boats behind you, and you burn the bridges, you better be able to make a success. And I just, that's what I did. And part of it was I wanted to create something that I didn't have to outsource. I make solution finish. I bottle, cap, label, ship. That We don't outsource anything from the time the 55 gallon barrels of chemicals come in to the time the bottles go out in cases, it's all us. So, you know, and I pay everything cash, so anything that goes out, I own. So when I get a check, I don't know anybody. You know, and that's how I wanted to be. And it's, and it, it, if you're thinking about doing this, just remember, it takes three to five years to become an overnight success. You know what I mean? No way, three to five years? Yeah, you can't just, I mean, I, I struggled, we downsized, we sold the big house on the uh, golf course when my kids were all gone. And then um, I got a much smaller condo, so, uh, you know, townhome. And we got rid of the Escalade, got rid of the X5 BMW, and just scaled everything down and made it easy. And my life was so much better for it, you know. And when I first started, I didn't know even one detailer. Didn't know anybody, not one person. I thought it was gonna go into the car wash industry. So when I owned coin operator car washes, I would go to the conventions and I would talk to guys about how to get their their property approved because spray washes, cities hate them. They hate them. Graffiti, noise, trash, they, not big income from sales. So they don't want, they want a 7-Eleven. They want a gas station, you know. So anyway, I would guide people how to do it and um, that was just a little side business. You know, so I thought that that's who was going to pick up my product. Did you have savings, or what was your backup plan? Oh, I had savings. And this company, growing it, used up my savings. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was at one point where you had to keep on going to make it work, you know. So. That's incredible. Yeah. So what was the scariest moment of your journey? And tell me also the moment where you felt like, whoa, I think I made it. Well, two, twofold. One, the scariest thing was spontaneous combustion. Somebody said that they used solution finish and they caught their van on fire. So that's, I'm thinking, well, the chemicals, and I'm thinking about it and thinking about, well, no, it, it's not going to oxidate that. It wasn't going to create the heat from that oxidation. Well, as it turns out, it wasn't solution finish. It was a bunch of uh, greasy uh, uh, rags and, and all kinds of uh, uh, cleaners and solution finish and everything, rags thrown in a barrel. And, and in the old days, everybody knows you don't put greasy rags in a pile. It creates 
as it dries, it creates the, the heat as it's oxidizing and it can burst into flames. I mean, there's 14,000 fires a year from spontaneous combustion. It's guys burning down the shops, their garages, their houses, their cars, their vans. So what you need to do is lay it out or soak it, let it dry to do that. But detailers would just throw everything in a bucket. Yeah. So he said, well, the last thing I used was solution finish. Well, it turns out because we really worked at this. We could not get solution finish to spontaneous combust in all the most extreme conditions. We you poured of it, a bunch of it on rags, put heat lamps on it, uh, did everything. It couldn't get it to even smoke. But if you take certain uh, microfiber towels and put rubbing alcohol in it and and uh, uh, paste waxes and compounds and put a whole mixture of stuff and leave it in the sun you know, 100 degree sun and that kind of thing, it will start smoking. So that's the most scariest part. I thought my product was flammable, and it's not, you know. And even today, if you look at all our bottles, I have a spontaneous combustion uh, uh, disclaimer on it, because what happens is organic oil, just regular oil, cooking oil, linseed oil, especially linseed oil, by itself will spontaneous combust. So I'm letting the general public know, look, this has a, a organic oil in it, which is known to, you know, I mean, just just cover my ass, but there, that was the scariest moment. Do uh, you recommend using a paint prep or a panel prep before solution finish? Um, the rule of thumb best practice is you, you wipe it down with rubbing alcohol, 60s, at, uh, 70, 90 percent is best, but 50, 50. You're just giving it an alcohol bath to two things, to dissolve any of the previously applied dressings that might be on there, right? Other products, but mostly you're trying to just kind of flush out the pores uh, on the plastic. But it's amazing that if even with no prep, it still lasts a long, long, long time. I, I haven't been able to see the difference, but people think that they have to do something. So I tell them, wipe it down with alcohol, you're gonna be good. Turns out, even if you don't, it's, it's good. Yeah, I love rubbing alcohol. You can use it on your bathroom mirrors, all your stainless steel appliances. Oh, yeah. uh, I'll sometimes do my counter after I'm chopping up chicken and then and then do 70, oh, 30 alcohol I, on I, it. I, I but but it's great on interior windshields of cars. Like, it's like it's the unicorn price, three dollars at the grocery store, it, or a or is dollar at the ninety-nine cent store, and I buy buckets <laughs> yeah, of it because yeah. I, you know, I keep my equipment really clean, and we have, or even if it's a little shop, it's still we have a lot of black uh, substances around our shop. So if you let it go, it becomes a nightmare. So we keep everything really clean. You know, and out rubbing alcohol does it. But I love that because for the DIYer out there, if you have a product that works, yeah. a little bit of rubbing alcohol from the store, a bottle that you just put on plastic, you don't need to like polish out the pigtails yeah. or you know what I mean? This is simple and it works, bro. So, man, um, what other products do you have? I've seen there's like a gray one. And I, you well, know, you're up in your game. What, what else you yeah, got? Uh, Solution finish black works really good on gray plastic. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make it uh, black, but it makes the gray pop again. So the pros have been doing that for years. Well, some, the general public, they said, no, I got gray plastic, I need, I'm not gonna put on a black. So I came out with fusion gray, which is along the lines of solution finish, but it, uh, it, it the black is a pigment. But gray is really black and white, where the white, um, when I mill it, it mushes. So it doesn't mill, it doesn't break down. So I had to find a, uh, it's so, the, the white that goes into the, the gray is a, like, it's just like a zinc, that, like you put it on your nose, as, uh, surfers and uh, lifeguards. So it's a metal-based uh, substance. And I, so I came up with fusion gray for gray plastic. And then just la recently launched um, over the top plastic sealer, which is, it's over the top because you apply solution finish, buff off the excess, 
sponge on over the top so you're going over the top of solution finish. Is that, because a lot of guys online will debate, what do you do with trim, right? Solution finish comes up in the comments. Then people will come up with another product as a ceramic coating or a ceramic trim product. Right. Does yours work, what do you tell those guys? Obviously you came out with a product for it, but those questions come up now. And well, I've tried ceramic coatings on trim. Yeah. And sometimes it looks great and sometimes yeah. it doesn't do anything like, like an old uh, fender flare on a truck. Yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't work yeah. and I needed solution it finish. All, yeah, it all depends. And the big, the big fad now is they put the ceramic coating trim uh, over the top of solution finish, which is great. It could, it, it increases its durability, longevity, two or three times more. The problem is, once you put on a coating, you have forever locked out solution finish's ability to go over that. So when that coating finally breaks down and gets uh, oxidizes, and it will, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years, but when it, when it actually degenerates and turns gray, there's nothing you can do about it. You would have to replace it. You're never gonna get it black again. Wow. See? So guys will come to me and say, I put on solution finish and it's just smearing and I, I put it on and then I wipe it off and it all wipes off or it's blotchy and I said, that's because somebody put on a ceramic coating previously and it looks great for a long time but then you, you can't uh, restore the black. So, over so there the is trim that is not restorable? Well, once you put a ceramic coating over it, you do it one time. And then you it, then it never works again. Yeah. So, so oh. that's why it, I came up with over the top. You could put over the top, over the top of solution finish, but then when it's ready for its next uh, 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 application, you can put solution finish over the top of over the top. You see, it, it, it's made to mesh with each other and, to, and be compatible. But with that real hard um, uh, silica type coating, you're done, you know. So that, that's always a problem. Guys would call and say, I got a Jeep. I heard so much about it. Um, I had a detailer. He used solution finish and he put on it, he coated it and sealed it for me. And now I just want, I bought a bottle and I wanted to do it myself. What am I doing wrong? So you're not doing anything wrong. You're just in a position where you're not gonna be able to uh, use it. You know, it's just one of those little things. And But detailers know everything. Detailers are the oh, chemists. Yeah. Oh, we can yeah. combine anything and it'll work. Yeah. We know, every, we, yeah. I, I think it's so hilarious. And I, I love that you admitted that you're not a chemist. Oh, yeah. everyone thinks they're, you know, I'm not even PhD, a... you know, they have all the fancy names and terms. And for me, it's like, I know what works, man. I don't know all the fancy terminology, but I know what works. That's all I need. I'm not even a detailer. Guys think <laughs> because I'm in this that they call me with these fancy questions. What do we do about this? I got stage one paint. I, I, you know, I have this equipment and this pad and this compound and I'm getting swirls and what do I do? You're asking the wrong guy, I'm a hack. In fact, the guys voted, I'm not allowed to touch a polishing machine for another like 18 months. I'm like on probation. What happened? Oh, well, we did a plane and nobody wanted to be at the very height of the plane, you know, the big bombers. So, you know, construction, I have no fear of height. So I go and I'm sitting on and they throw me up a bottle of, of uh, a, I don't know, like a, a, a cut or a compound. Yeah. I'm gobbing it on, and I'm and and when I burn up a pad, I'm throwing it down, and it's going kaplop. It weighs like four pounds, and the guy goes, "All these guys are working two days with the same pad, and they use one bottle." I went through like three bottles in <laughs> one tail, you know, and they, you know. So yeah, no, I, I don't hilarious. know. You know, if you want to talk about plastic, vinyl, rubber, the mechanics of it, what happens to rubber, why it, see, people don't realize that plastic doesn't oxidize. Pure plastic doesn't oxidize. It's the impurities and the additives that the manufacturer put in it to create more of it to save money. So that's why like a Saturn would turn the shit in, you know, uh, eight months. 
Brand new car starts oxidating. It's full of crap in, in the polymer. BMW, Mercedes, nicer, higher end cars, they have a purer plastic. It eventually starts oxidizing, but not to, it takes longer to, for that to happen. So uh, I'm gonna sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, because I don't. I happen to have a Subaru, and the A-pillar area, it's not piano trim, it's this dark plastic, and it's oxidized, and I put, dude, I put a pro-level ceramic coating on it within the first year that I got it, I'm a detailer, and I have no idea what happened and what to do. Do you know what, do you, are you the guy to talk to about this? Yeah, see. Subaru you're, Legacy you're, 2017. It doesn't matter, most of them, it's not plastic. It either has, it has a coating or a cap over the panel itself, so, uh, some guys can polish them out, but when they polish them out, they're polishing the plastic covering on it. And if it doesn't have it, it's more of a, um, it's, it's on the, long, the lines of a powder coating, you know. So, AV pillars or a nightmare because it's not a plastic, it's not a rubber, it's not a vinyl. Some are coated, they're all sealed in a certain way. So, uh, it's trial and error. Really? I mean, part of me thinks the only way to make that appearance-wise look better, and I, I got a couple kids, you know, it, it's not a, a fancy car by any means, would be to just get it wrapped or something like that. You know what I mean? I just, I, I don't see that as something that I know how to restore. Well, I ex tried to explain that to a guy and he said, oh, okay, I didn't know that. He, he ordered a new cap for his pillar. It, it popped out, it actually popped out in one piece and he snapped on a new one. Okay. So, but all cars are different, so I have no idea yeah, what, yeah. how you do it, you know. Spontaneously, uh, I just I thought of that. Um, yeah. And that's You're a, a likable, thing. unique guy. Mm, uh, that's my wife. And I wonder to what you would attribute your success. I mean, the product works, but your relationships with people, taking care of them, customer service, what percentage would you say that's played in your success? I, I'm not sure. I'm kind of um, amused on this whole thing. I wanted. To, I didn't want to be the face of Solution Finish. I wanted to be the guy in the in the uh, shop making it and sending it out. So when I first started, I hired uh, celebrity type car guys. You know that were on uh, Car Warriors or you know Velocity Channel or Discovery to stand in a booth and you know pitch my product and I would some of them cost a lot of money but I it was worth it marketing wise and I found that people were walking right by them and to talk to me because they wanted to know the story behind the guy that did it you know and then it kind of started from there where I was forced to talk about my own product but I think the biggest thing is I don't tout if you look at my posts you look at stuff I don't tout solution finish I always talk about IGL's new products or PNS or Rupus and I, I, I promote the companies and by, by extension they see me not being an egomaniac and say, okay, here I am doing this and here I'm doing that and here's this help for me and here's, you know, I don't do that. The detailers, when they use Solution Finish, they're so enthralled with it they do a 50-50 to show people what they can yeah, do. Yeah, they do yeah. videos. So the detailer, the detailing industry, they're the ones who have helped Solution become what it is because they're talking about it. You know, so I don't need to talk about it. Now, people think that the detailers support Solution Finish. They do because they use it, but a bo one bottle would do 30 to 36 cars, the 12 ounce pro size. So a, a professional detailer may only use one bottle a year. Yeah. Well, if all the detailers only bought one bottle a year, I would starve. But because all those detailers talk about it, it gets the attention of the, the general consumer, the G DIY guys, the enthusiasts, and they're the ones that buy it from my distributors. And that's where it grows. You know, so, you know, I've never spent a penny in marketing or advertising other than those early days with the celebrities, you know, so it, it's, you know, in construction development, 
I won all the awards. I get pictures in the magazines. You know, um, they were really special. You know, they're three, four, five million dollar homes. And, you know, I, I created a name for myself, but it was for the company. The company um, was known for building really high end custom homes, not me. You know, but I was the owner, so it, it, it my name kind of came up. You know, but I don't know. I'm I'm I, I'm amused by it all. You know, I'm I'm happy. Whoa, 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 whoa buddy, excuse me. Yes, sir. We're just doing an interview here. Sorry, you're totally good. It's okay, you're no good. worries. You're fine, bro. Yeah. No, we're in the That's middle of SEMA. No, we got right. a we got a table here with pamphlets on yeah, it. We're no, good, no, but no, it's cool. Um, you're <laughs> amused by it all. Yeah. Somebody asked me once to sign a bottle of Slusa Finish, and I, and it's not being humble. I was so embarrassed. I, I didn't, I didn't even think that that. Why would that? Why would? Why wouldn't they need it or want it? You know, but it's just showing, giving some love on something that helped their business and uh, making them look better. So if if I'm making detailers look better you know I'm making them be more professional and it's working to grow their business then then I have succeeded you know because if I keep the industry strong uh, all of us all of us benefit you know so that's what it's all about you know? what do you wish you knew when you were 25 well it's interesting question I mean the real personal answer is I've been sober 27 years now. So I quit drinking at 40. If I was 25, I wish I would have quit drinking at 25. But uh, I got married when I just turned 17, you know, and waited five years to have my son. So looking back at 25 year old, I wish I would have uh, picked one industry, one career and took 25 years, 30 years to grow that. I, I was known for starting over. I was always, you know, you know, they asked me, what am I good at? I said, starting over. You know, my best attribute is, you know, skating on thin ice. When you go from making the kind of money I made to stopping and saying, okay, I'm gonna do this now, solution finish, uh, that was a big deal. My wife, kids, and everybody knew thought I was out of my mind, you know. How did it feel for them to feel that way about oh, you? Oh yeah, now now they're just, you know. They're... At the time though, I mean, oh, how, they, did, no, how did no, that it feel was, at the time? It was terrible. For them to feel that about you, and you did it anyway, like. Oh no, It's so I... easy to think you've always been you, and your success has always been here, but take me back to that time where you put it on the line, and, and you had a family, and you said, I'm doing this, and they didn't like it. Like, what was that like? No, you know what? My wife and kids obviously know me better than anybody else. When dad says he's gonna do something, he's gonna do it. And if you're gonna try to talk him out of it, it's, it's you know, a wasted breath. Because I was never like that. I said, look, it's my life, and my job is to take care of you. If I stop taking care of you, the five kids, and if I stop taking care of the people I love and I'm responsible for, then you can criticize my decisions. But until then, zip it, you know. So, and they always, they always had faith in me. I, I when I was 19, um, I bought a 240 Datsun Z. Just came out on the showroom floor, you know, and I was building five condos up in Lake Tahoe. I mean, I've always been pretty successful, but Drinking and using along being successful has its downfalls. You know? And what's scary about it is you can be successful and do that for a long time you can, and think you can that be... nobody's going to know and you've got this little secret and it's dangerous yeah. and there's just a lot of work that needs yeah. to happen on yourself there's that isn't happening of... that you're, you're, yeah. you're masking there's, with success. Yeah. There's a lot work. of functioning alcoholics. I know guys, multi-millionaires. They're full-blown alcoholics. But um, they're miserable. They may be successful. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be successful, you better start by being happy and successful. 
if you're just successful and not happy, then, you know, then you're in the wrong business. I wasn't happy building anymore. You know, I would build up a, a, a mass amount of money and, and uh, building a company, and then every 10 years when the real estate took a shit and the interest and, and the cycle came around where the, we were in a recession, right? When the peanut farmer was in office, I was building up a company, interest shot up to 18 to 20% Carter. Right then, when the SNLs came through, um, they all were uh, were shut down because of the, that crisis. And then back in 08, they had the housing crisis. Every 10 years, I'm starting over because what I built up wasn't worth anything anymore. Hmm. You know, so you know that's why I got out of construction. I want to build something that, if I'm not at the mercy of the government or insurance or banks or things that are out of my control. If I screw up in I, what I'm doing, then it's on me. But it was always on somebody else and you, there's nobody to talk to about it. You know, there's nobody to call. It's just the way it is. You lose everything and you start over, you know. If you're going to be successful, start by being happy. Oh, I think so. I. I you know, you, we've heard it our whole lives. Find something that you enjoy and gives you joy and you won't have to work a day in your life. You know what I mean? And I always thought that was kind of a corny, trite saying. I was gonna say, it sounds like a cliche, like, come yeah, on, get real. But it's so true. I work 12, 14 hours a day, seven days a week. And I, the way I look at it, I get to do this. I get to go to the shop, listen to music, you know, have, uh, uh, have cable TV on, nobody's bothering me. I send out pallets to places unknown and, and um, oh, it's, I love that. you know. Yeah. I love that, man. That's how it works. I love that. Well, hopefully some of these words were inspiring to folks. Uh, it's been a real it. pleasure talking to you, Chris. I know there's a lot more to yeah. say. Oh, yeah. But uh, I never met you before. Yeah. So thanks for your time, brother. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Bye, guys. Bye.